First of all, it would have been good to have actually backed this up with evidence. I've spent months, if not years, in Chinese chicken farms, and they have no connection whatsoever with the Chinese state. More importantly, they have no connection to Chinese credit lines, which is essentially what farmers need to really scale. You know, you can farm at a local level quite cheaply, keeping your costs down and scaling up. But, you know, if you want to move, you know, from a small, medium-sized farm to a, a larger enterprise, you need a lot of capital injection, with most, which most of these farmers don't have have. Um, so there is no connection to the Chinese state when it comes to these very, very local grassroots farmers. And there is no injection of hormones or poison or what have you. You know, these are all myths. And I have sp spent years, as I said, I have gone to almost every single Chinese chicken farmers there was in and around Lusaka. I know exactly where that was filmed. I've gone to almost all the major chicken markets at three in the morning, at six in the morning. So the first things are first. Is, and this is the big problem with the China story is that Everyone tells the story without the facts. You know, uh, can I going just say to, uh, you know, picking up a couple of sound... It, picking up sound we, bites we don't say, is, is, we, we is very don't, important. We don't say in the documentary need, that the Chinese state supports... we need the facts uh, to go with the story. No, we, we don't, in the documentary, we don't say that the Chinese uh, state is supporting the, the Chinese uh, farmers. We don't say that. And what's also Absolutely. interesting is that uh, the, the, the Zambian government, actually five years ago, it passed a new law banning foreigners from selling uh, chickens in the markets. But, you... but what these people say is that even though they're not present on the market, they're still yep. contr controlling a lot of the networks. That's what the Zambian farmers, marketeers are saying. Yeah, ab absolutely. I, I just, I just what, what I want to do is maybe just move away from kind of these narrative destroying tropes, which is like the Chinese are coming in and doing everything on a very passive kind of African canvas. That's not true. And as you were saying, I think putting, you know, African markets have reacted, Zambian markets have reacted very intelligently uh, and put in very specific protectionist measures. So, for example, you know, two of the major chicken trading hubs, because we're on the chicken story, were on the Tuesday... Uh, two markets where China's are really present are the Tuesday market and, you know, Soweto market. And the way these two markets uh, reacted to the Chinese, you know, aggressive marketing of their produce, on the one hand, they said, but on the, on the Tuesday market, you cannot sell or produce or trade anything that the, our local producers can do. So you, you cannot sell potatoes, you cannot sell tomatoes, you cannot sell cabbage. And that actually pushed, this was in the early, late 2000s, early 2010s, and that pushed a whole group of Chinese farmers to go and diversify their agricultural produce. And the Chinese started farming mushrooms, they started producing tofu, and all these new agricultural products started to come onto these markets. And it completely changed the structure and, you know, what was on offer. And then the, the, the Soweto market, was, where specifically where the chickens are being sold, what they were told, what the Chinese chicken seller was told, you cannot come in here after sunrise. You can come and sell, but before sunrise. So they were in the markets between, generally between three to six, and set, it takes about an hour to clear your, your cages and to move out of the market. So they were there during that window. And, these, and, and that was so that, you know, when the sun rises, the Zambian traders who don't have the means to compete effectively, you know, in a market environment, could come and then sell their chickens at whatever rate they wanted to. So in these two instances, you had very, in, very localized, very intelligent uh, reactions by what we call the market authorities, very local who try to deal with this. The bigger story, of course, is what do we do when liberal economic and political systems penetrate parts of the world that used to be, let's say, you know, peripheral or averse to them? You know, and that is the that, story that behind is, the China-Zambia, China-Africa. That is the story.